Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Christina and today we are going to be talking about relationships in Adalo. So this is a presentation that I've made for complete beginners who um, ha who are just starting out in Adalo and um, are still learning about relationships and how to make your databases kind of talk to each other. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. This is our terms. So this is assuming you know nothing about relationships going into the Adalo Builder. Um, so I thought we should start talking about some of the terms that we'll be using within this um, tutorial. So database is a spreadsheet with information. A collection is called a, a database is called a collection. So um, if you see in Adalo um, the, a tab that looks like a little spreadsheet icon um, and it's it's going to say collection that's basically where we store all of our databases and then within each database we will have rows and rows of data so a row of data is a record uh, and multiple rows is going to just be called records um, and a relationship is basically how you will link two spreadsheets together so we're going to show you um, all the different types of relationships um, in the next few slides um, first things first when we go to build our app, um, we're going to need our different databases to talk to each other. And this is why you'll want to link them um, so that you can make your app very powerful and make it work. Um, there's basically three types of relationships, one to many, many to one, and many to many. And with one to many, this is the by far the most common relationship that you'll use, the most common type. And um, basically it's when one record needs to be linked to multiple records of um, another database. Um, so one user can have multiple records of something. Um, and here on the right side, you'll see a little chart or a little graphic that explains this. So an example of an app that I was building, um, a user can have multiple financial records, but a financial record belongs to only one user. So that is a one to many relationship. So let's talk about um, some of these. Um, in this example, um, let's say you're trying to build a note taking app. A user can have multiple notes, but a note will only belong to one user. So examples here, Patrick is a user, Kevin is our user, and Catherine is our user. And Patrick has Patrick's notes, Kevin has Kevin's notes, and Catherine have, has her notes. And Patrick can only access his notes when your app is set up correctly. Patrick can only access his notes, Kevin can only access his, and Catherine can only access hers. Um, and they can't access each other's because um, of the way it's set up. And you're gonna need to go into the settings and say, um, show only logged in user, um, and then whatever database you wanna link that to. So in this case, notes. Um, but I've illustrated this to say that we have multiple notes under Patrick. Um, and so this is a one to many relationship. Um, a pro tip, when you're making your databases, you'll want to put into words how you think you might want to link them together, kind of like what we're doing here. And that will help you um, figure out the different types of relationships that you're going to need when you're um, linking them. Um, a second example, when you're trying to build a personal trip planning app, a user can have multiple trips saved, but a trip can only belong to one user. So again, Patrick can have multiple different um, trips underneath his in his account, Kevin can has his own and Catherine can ha can have these um, trips saved up. Um, but these trips are multiple trips that link to one person. So um, this is a one to many relationship. Now, many to one, multiple records in one database is linked to one record in another. Um, this is uh, a really powerful one when you're trying to categorize your records. So one specific example is when you're trying to use a drop-down menu um, and yeah, so you want to categorize different things. Um, a user can have only one financial record. A financial record can have multiple users. Um, that's not what we want, but I just highlighted that to show you kind of what um, Adala would say in their builder. Um, one prime example though of a many to one kind of relationship is when you are trying to create um, categories within your notes app, let's say, um, and a note is listed as a top, medium, or low priority. 
So your priority level is your category and a priority level can have multiple notes, but a note will only be assigned one priority level. So I've illustrated it here on this side. Um, let's say you have all these tasks to do when you're starting out a business and you want to write your business plan, you want to book client calls, you want to create a website, you want to write your copy, you want to design logo, you want to write business plan, oh, write a, a second business plan, um, you want to create your brochure. Um, and so um, these are your high priority items, these are your medium priority items, and these are your low priority items. So when you go to create your two different databases, you're going to have a database with tasks, right? These are your tasks. And then a second database with these three categories. Um, and when you go to, um, as a user then, create a task, you're gonna type in your task name and you're going to select the category. Um, and then that will um, make sure that these show up correctly. Okay. A, another example of a many to one relationship is a recipe that falls under um, a certain category of food for a food prep app. Um, and that category can have multiple recipes. So for example, you have an app and you're collecting recipes and you're kind of sorting them into, let's say breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And French toast, a fruit bowl, this is wrong. Let me fix that typo, there you go. A fruit bowl is, let's say a breakfast, food, um, coffee, obviously breakfast. Um, and then salads, lunch, um, some, kind of, some kind of pasta for dinner. Um, these, when you create them, you'll say French toast is your item, and then you're going to categorize it under breakfast. So you're going to do what we did in this previous example and write in your um, recipe name, type in the recipe, blah, 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 all the details, and then you're going to select that category, right? You're going to select a category of um, which type of meal it fits under. Um, and that's your many to one. So you have many items to one um, item here. Many um, records linked to one. Now, many to many. This one is when multiple records in two different databases can relate to each other. So um, a financial record can have multiple users. A user can have multiple financial records. This is very rarely used, and this is only for super advanced stuff, but um, I did have one example that can illustrate this. Uh, multiple students, so your database is going to be students and multiple classes, your database will be classes. Multiple students can be in multiple classes and multiple classes can have different students. So this is your many to many relationship. Um, it's gonna get really complicated from here on. Um, so I didn't want to like illustrate a very specific um, example for you, but if you have any questions that you, um, find as you're kind of going through these, feel free to comment below and I will try and find the answers and answer these as best as I can. Um, but I thought that this um, quick demo or quick walkthrough of the different types of relationships will be helpful to anyone who's just starting out on a DALO and need to kind of learn um, kind of how it works within a DALO. The good thing is that um, these are when you go to make a relationship um, and I'll have a demo video after this. Um, when you go to make a relationship, you're going to be forced to pick one of these immediately. And um, the good thing is that they kind of list out the different relationships. So you can kind of go through in your head which one of the t uh, which one of these types work best for what you want. Um, and that's how you'll be able to um, make your app work from there. Um, but like I said, the most common one is one to many, and it's usually um, a, let's say a database and then your user. So your user's database is always going to be one, and then it's whatever um, kind of notes you're saving um, that you'll be linking to that user. Um, so in any of the apps that I've built, two or three now um, that I've done for clients, most of the um, relationships in those two apps, let's say, are um, different databases that of course relate to the user and it's because a user can have multiple items under that database but um, that item can only belong to one user so now we are going to talk about the demo for how to set up relationships within the adalo builder um, so let's say we have two two different database collections and we have users which is by default you're always going to have a users and you're going to have tasks this is a to-do list app and um, the way we're going to do this is we're going to keep it very simple for now um, and we're going to say cancel we're going to say um, 
first of all, if you don't have a collection, if you're starting out completely from scratch, don't worry, you're gonna have a user's um, database collection by default. And then what you're going to need is create a collection for the tasks. Um, and you're going to simply, I'm gonna do that again and then walk you through. You're going to go ahead and add collection and type in the collection name and add and it will create a new collection for you. Once you have a collection, you're going to see that it has basically one empty field and that is your name. And then you're going to add more fields and a field is a property. And when you click on add property, you're going to see a bunch of these. The most common is text and um, sometimes you'll use date, image, and file. I find that I use this 90% of the time. So, um, yeah, name, status. So this would be the task name itself and the status of the um, task. Um, so we need to link these two to each other. So what we're going to do is come into here and we're going to add property and you'll see that at the bottom here is relationships. You're going to relate the tasks to users. So you're going to go here, you're going to come to the side and you're going to click users. This is that dialog box we showed you in the presentation. So a user can have multiple tasks, but a task belongs to one user. So that's what we want. Um, if you have a specific, um, thing in here where um, multiple users can have multiple tasks, this is what you want. If you're categorizing your task based on the, let's say, priority level or the type of task it is, let's say it's a home related, personal related, career related, um, or client related task, whatever um, you kind of want to sort that into, that's when you'll use the second one here, which is um, your many to one. Um, but for now, because we're keeping it very simple, we're going to use this one right here on the top and we're going to click that and you can call this anything. I usually keep the type or the name, um, user, but if you want, you can say task owner or what have you. Um, so once you name that, you'll save it and you will see that within this task, um, you'll see a link to users. So now every time we create a task, we'll need to select the user that this task falls under. Um, and that, let's say, um, create a website because I am a website designer. Um, and then status, hi, or actually I think this one is to do and complete. So I'm going to do that and save. So now you'll see create website is the name of the task to do is the status and it's linked to users, um, which means if I come to users, I can see that he has one task linked to him. Um, and that's this one. So that is how you um, create a relationship between two databases. Okay. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know down below and I'll be happy to try and answer them. Um, and we will see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.